no one, no one, no one, no one has a monopoly on God's grace. No one has a monopoly on God's grace. The disciple in today's gospel fell into a common human trap, one that can too easily stumble us, cause us to stumble into thinking that God's work is confined to those who are part of our circle or those who are part of our community. They assume that only those who are officially with them to serve God. But Jesus quickly dismantles this narrow way of thinking. He shows that God's grace is far bigger than our human boundaries. God's grace transcends human division. We don't have a monopoly on God's grace. His work extends beyond whatever we could ask or imagine. And today we are warned about the spiritual pride that comes from an us-and-them mentality. The kind of pride that can blind us to surprising ways in which God is at work in the world through unexpected people in unexpected places. And it can cause us to miss where God is causing us, calling us to serve. So, what's our response to this? In this homily, I want to focus on three key points. Don't exclude. Don't Excuse and don't ignore. Don't exclude. Don't sorry. Don't exclude. Don't excuse and don't ignore. First, don't exclude. If we are serious about participating in God's kingdom, we must not exclude those who are outside of our community. This is a call to partnership. We need to build bridges with other Christians recognizing that as followers of Jesus, we have far more in common than what divides us. God is calling us to work more closely in cooperation with other Christians in our community. But exclusion can also take more subtle forms. We can unintentionally exclude those who don't look like us or don't behave like traditional church goers focusing on outward appearances rather than the motivations of the heart can alienate those who are seeking God. We might also become a little too too comfortable within our close-knit groups, forming cliques that unintentionally exclude other people. So we must always be attentive to those who are on the outside reaching out to welcome them into the community, we must become an invitational people. This kind of of exclusion, which again, I want to emphasize, is largely unintentional. How we go to church, how we behave, all of this stuff becomes so ingrained that we can unintentionally exclude people. I had a conversation yesterday with a dear man who, I don't know, I would guess he's in his... um, mid forties. He knows nothing, absolutely nothing about the liturgy. He knows nothing about the faith. But he is so hungry and thirsty that the opportunity just to sit with him in front of a little Nicolette and to break down the parts of the liturgy and to even talk about basic things like the Old Testament and the New This is a man who's hungry for faith. And when he walks in here, it can feel like he doesn't know what's going on, and so he can feel excluded. But let me guarantee you one thing. The Holy Spirit is doing a beautiful work in his heart, and we must be attentive to where the Holy Spirit is moving. So I'm not talking about people of bad will here. I'm talking about people of good will who unintentionally prevent others from experiencing the truth, the beauty, and the goodness of the Catholic faith and the beautiful work that God is doing here in this parish community. So that don't excuse. Now, don't excuse. This is um, a really important part of this homily because it's an important part of our call to holiness. It's a reminder that our journey toward holiness is not an individual endeavor, endeavor, but one that involves mutual responsibility. 
We are called, dear brothers and sisters, to help one another grow in faithfulness, to grow in holiness, to reflect more deeply the image and likeness of God, which includes the duty of holding each other accountable. We cannot turn the blind eye to wrongdoing, especially when it involves abuse of power or authority within the church. Now, I know this is difficult to talk about, but I don't know about you. When I talk to people who are either lax Catholics or people who have never been Catholic who are interested in the Catholic Church, the conversation quickly turns to clergy sex abuse and this wretched part of our history. Now, while our clergy are human and prone to error, any abuse of authority is intolerable particularly when it endangers the vulnerable such as children, Jesus is unequivocal in his warning today to us, where he said, it would be better for anyone to have a millstone tied around their neck and to be cast into the sea than to lead one of these little ones astray. So, dear friends, if you are aware of any misuse of authority or abuse in the church, I urge you to bring it to the attention of our bishop's office immediately. And if you find yourself needing assistance in this process, I know it can be intimidating to contact the bishop's office, know that I am here to offer my full and confidential support to you. Our commitment to holiness, to healing as the body of Christ, includes protecting the most vulnerable among us as Christ himself has commanded. My last point, don't ignore. This is a call not to ignore, but to care deeply for the generation that's coming up behind us. To pass on not the traditions of our, not just the traditions of our faith, but the living example of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Our children and our grandchildren are watching us. They learn from us seven days of the week, not just because we go to church on Sunday. They observe how we live our faith, uh, how we live our faith, how we treat one another, and how we respond to the needs of those around us. So the question we must ask ourselves is: If we are creating a church alive with merciful love, a genuine love of God, and a genuine love of one another. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do we reflect the gospel in our care for the poor and the marginalized? Are we showing the next generation that the faith, that our faith, is not merely about rituals and obligations, but about living up with a heart full of mercy and generosity? The way we model our faith today will shape the church of tomorrow. So let us ensure that we are passing on a faith that is both authentic and compelling, grounded in Christ's merciful love, and honoring the tradition of our ancestors. Today's readings are deeply challenging for us, and they challenge us to broaden our vision of God's work. Are we too quick to dismiss those outside of our faith community? Do we hold on to feelings of superiority because of our religious affiliation? Jesus invites us to see that the kingdom of God is far more expansive than we can ask or imagine, and that His mercy is greater than we could ever ask or imagine. So let us go forward, refusing to exclude, refusing to excuse and refusing to ignore. Let us live out the mission of God with humility and love and in a spirit of partnership. Because no one, no one has a monopoly on God's grace. Amen.